I've been getting a lot of like messages, at least in the comments from the last video, um, asking essentially like, oh, like can you showcase how to play this deck? I don't know how to play this deck, um, etc. And so I figure I, even though like I'm playing in a rogue tournament, a lot of the fundamentals are um for like the plunder deck is pretty much the same. So I figured like this would probably be like. Um, a really good way to showcase the deck is to like watch it right in action. So without further ado, guys, um, we'll get right into the first replay, which is going to be the Plunder Mirror. I think this is a really good way to showcase you guys like the technical play of this deck, um, as it relates to the mirror because the mirror can be very skillful and like the attributes you put in your grave can be very detrimental to you. So uh, I'll show you guys what I mean by that. All right. Um, here I actually lose RPS. You'll find that like all my all my matches I lose all my RPS. I actually I didn't win a single one throughout the whole tournament, um, and they all made me go first. Uh, especially when I was playing a go second list. Funny enough, um, but anyways I open up a really good hand, a really really good hand. But here's instead of over committing, what I decided to do was I just took the chance and just pass on an empty board, um, just because I. He didn't know what I was playing. I had no idea what he was playing. And I just didn't want to, like, show show anything, pretty much. And I was thinking of in Rogue, like, there's not really a lot of Rogue decks that can, like, OTK you. Except for the Plunder deck. But that's only if they open up the Field Spell. So, I was like, okay, hmm. What are the chances he actually OTKs me? Because if he doesn't, I OTK him. So, um, we're going to get right into it. Um, I Like, you'll see, I, I just literally pass. So, he's going to start. And... We'll see that he's going to actually open up his turn with desires. We'll see what he banish. Um, so let's see his 10. So we'll see that he banished Bluebeard, Emblem, Shipyard, Storm, Emblem. So he lost both his Emblem. He lost three Emblems, actually. He lost all his Emblems, I think. Yeah, he lost all his Emblems, a Shipyard, and then a hair. That's not, That's like pr the Emblem loss is pretty bad. He's going to draw two more cards, which is like another hair, another desires. That's very unlucky. Uh, very, very unlucky. And then you're going to see he starts off with hair. That's when I saw that I was playing the mirror. I was like, oh, God, yes. Because in the mirror, Emblem is actually broken. I'll show you I'll show you what I mean by that. So Emblem is like actually insane. So he's going to make Almirage. Use the effect to dump white. Summon back the hair. Use um, no effect on white. I don't know why he did this. He actually did no effect on white. They just make Blackbeard. So I was like, if he's going to make Blackbeard anyways, he should have just summoned off it. So I was like, that was actually interesting. Anyways, he just attacks for 16 and pass. I thought he was actually not going to do it because he wanted to make Bahamu Shark, but he didn't have Bluebeard to uh, extend and make the Bahamu Shark. So I'm not sure why he did that. He could have banished all his plunders, but then I looked at his banish pile, and he only banished one hair and one Bluebeard, and you play three of every single one. So I was kind of curious why I did that but without further ado he's gonna set one booty which is really good because he does have a white in the graveyard to reborn um so he should be okay I top deck another red which is not the greatest but I start off my turn immediately without normal summoning anything and I don't even attempt to kaiju this because uh he has his graveyard kind of loaded up for me anyways and I essentially want to use emblem because he can't tag out and dodge the emblem if there's nothing for him to tag out into so we'll see that I start off with emblem and then I took his monster and then I'm going to make Bran. The reason why, because I was afraid of his back row. So I wanted to essentially hit the Bran, um, hit the back row, and then trigger Bran to search. So I'm going to use Bran to discard the white to banish the, the face down. He's going to chain booty uh, to bring back the white. Um, and he's going to make my Bran dark. Um, and then I'm going to be able to search Bluebeard off the Bran uh, as an extra extender. And then the white will then summon... The white was supposed to summon something. Wait. I think I just... Oh, I think this was a misplay on my part. I forgot to summon off white. I forgot to summon off white. Wow. So this was a crazy misplay off me. I forgot to summon off white. I should have summoned off white. And I think that's why, like, I couldn't OTK him. I, if I had the white, I'm pretty sure I would have OTK'd him. Um, so there you'll see that that misplay is going to actually not allow me to OTK him. Because I, I dumped the white off Bran, and then I just literally forgot to search. Because I, I searched off Bran, and then I just forgot the white effect, which is really, really bad on my part. Anyways, I'm going to go Radiant on him, uh, which is going to force him to summon out red. And then the reason why I do this is because I just want him to have a dark for me. Um, um, anything next after that. Because he made um, Bran uh, a dark, 
he can't I know that he can't hit my field spell now if I use it. So what I'm gonna do is uh he's gonna go into Blackbeard and then use Blackbeard to draw an extra card. Um to summon right here, Mork. And then he's gonna draw an extra card. He draws in a lightning storm here. Um then we'll see that what I'm gonna try to do is I use Bluebeard's effect to special summon itself from the hand. And then I summon it right away. And at this point he's gonna think I immediately make Blackbeard because he said it's okay. And then I went Chainlink 1 Bluebeard to discard my shipyard. The reason There's a very specific reason why I did this. It's because I know that I can reshuffle the cards in my graveyard in my spell and trap zone and then just add it back anyway. So it was a free draw one pretty much. So I'm going to use Bla Redbeard to equip to the, the Blackbeard and then drew one card. And then I can use shipyard effect to actually um, essentially shuffle put this back into my hand and then set this for free. Um Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, shooping. That's why. Yeah, 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 I that's probably what I was thinking of at that moment in time. Um that I think at the moment in time I didn't use Whitebeard because I would be logging to Kaiju. Yeah, yeah. I knew I wanted to Kaiju him. Yeah, yeah. Because I saw him use booty effects, so that's why I didn't use white. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I think that was my logic at the moment in time. Because I was trying to think like there's no way I would miss this and not activate white. Because I always make sure to use white. Be like, like that card is so broken. But yeah, it, ha it had to do with the Radiant for sure. Um, but now that makes more sense. Anyways, I'm going to use Shipyard's effect. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, he's going to chain... Okay, it's, what he's going to do is very interesting. He's going to chain Mork to my brand so that the equip falls off and I don't get to add it back to my hand. But he actually didn't read Shipyard correctly. So Shipyard is interesting because it does A and then B. So... A is to set the card. So you're always setting the card, even if the card that you're supposed to bounce back to your hand gets removed from the field. So he's going to hit the brand, and then uh, when he tries to target the brand, I'm going to chain the Blackbeard on the brand to, to summon a monster, uh, which is Mork. Um, and then that lets me draw a card. But sorry, I just overlaid it for some reason. Draw a card. So that gets reset. Yep. And then here's the card I draw. Yep. So he was just confused. You're like saying, oh, wait, how do you get field back? I'm like, yeah, it's on an A and then B. It's like you do A and then the B part is returned to the hand. In this case, like it doesn't matter even if if it card doesn't get bounced to the hand. Um. Anyways, at this point, I'm like thinking, how do I how do I play through this? So what I go here is I actually went for the Mork. I discarded the Golden here because I know she's a free special summon and I'm going to hit the Radiant. Search the ship ship shipping. Um, and then the reason why I do this is because uh, ship ship shipping is a free discard off for hair. Um, and then, yeah, I can discard off shipyard, add the white, and then use hair, f then use white effect now. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, this makes a lot more sense now. So, I was essentially not using white because I wanted to kaiju and then save the white effect to use later. And then there, there it is. Summon white now. Now the golden hair triggers, and then here is where I try to go for game, but I think I didn't do it properly because I actually forgot to use ship ship shipping to get the emblem. Um, so this was a big misplay. I even told him after the game, yo, I could have OTK'd you. I just literally misplayed so hard. So I hard made the brand, um, just because just to get more damage on board. Um, so I attacked with this first. It, it goes to twenty six. Um, then I attack with this, which is at 3,000, and then I attack with, uh, Mork, um, which is at 2,000, um, but the thing is, if you, p I'm gonna pause the game right here, if I, like, save a resource, so if I summon Redbeard in attack mode, then use Ship Ship Shipping to actually equip the emblem to the Golden Hair, uh, Golden Hair could cheat it out me a brand, and so I would have had Bran, Mork, Blackbeard, and then a 1,000 attack Redbeard. The thousand attack Redbeard would get actually get buffed, um, and then all my other monsters, it it was just it would have been game. So I just I just definitely misplayed that, um, but it's fine because I do have an extra resource in the grave for the follow up. So I'm like whatever. But you'll see here that I get super punish. Um, oh yeah, I think what did I equip this? Oh yeah yeah yeah. So okay, I equip this to brand um to 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 the brand just so that brand becomes a quick effect and i i wanted to like essentially hit his field spell if he top to top duck day one but here i get really unlucky he topped like the lightning storm and evenly so i was like wow that's so unlucky um so i get punished by the the evenly match here but i'm gonna use black uh blackbeard's effect first 
to eff effectively draw a card, um, which draws me into the Ash, which is actually going to save me the game. Um, and then he's going to banish everything. So the reason why I saved Booty in this case was because I could Booty into a Whitebeard and then use Whitebeard effect to summon out a Mork and then use Mork to effectively like banish his card. And that would be really, really good. And then I can keep recurring Booty because Booty is like every other turn. Like if you use it on your opponent's turn, you can use it again on your turn. So it's basically a free, um, it's like a free Monster Reborn every single turn if as long as you have a card to target, which is really, really powerful because um, it's a continuous trap. But then, unfortunately, I get punished again because he had Lightning Storm. So, I mean, he literally had everything. And I was like, oh, wow, that's insane. This is why, like, it was so important to just OTK him instead of letting him live a turn. Um, but anyways, he's going to activate Desires, I think, pretty sure. Um, but thankfully, because I drew into Ash, um, I was able to Ash his Desires. And at this point in time, he literally banished everything, man. Like, he banished, he resolved Desires twice. And look at how many monsters he, re he banished. He banished literally everything. Like, he banished 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, yeah, that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 out of 20 cards in his banished pile were plunder cards, right? And if you look at the plunder ratio, it's around 20 cards. So, there's 2 in hand, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 in the grave. That I mean, literally means he barely has any plunder cards left. Obviously, I didn't notice, but I knew the fact that he already resolved Desire twice means that there's no way he comes back from the game. So, he's going to go Normal Summon Red Pass. And what I do is I do kind of like the same thing. I notice that like my graveyard doesn't have any dark, so there's no way for him to disrupt me. But his graveyard has a Mork, which means that I can tag into a Mork on my turn. Um, so, he's going to Shotgun it and just Summon out the Blackbeard. Um, I guess he... I'm not sure why I did this, but I guess just so that Blackbeard can dodge stuff. Um, but anyway, he shotguns the Blackbeard, and then I go summon Redbeard, and then I pass. The reason why I pass is because I want to keep uh, Bluebeard in my hand, just for the fact that I can get to use Redbeard's effect, and then essentially um, play off that. So he's going to use Blackbeard's effect, I think, to make Bran. Yeah, so he gets a free draw there. He draws into the Dark Ruler no more, um, and I was like, okay, sure, that's fine with me. And then I'm going to use uh, Redbeard's effect to make a Mork. And then he Dark Ruler'd me. So I was like, oh, man, that's actually insane. Uh, so I was like, oh, shoot, that's really, really bad for me. But then his brand can't even get over my Mork anyway. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, and then at this point in time, um, it's, I think I'm pretty sure I just went off from here. Because he can't add, he can't have, he had no targets off brand to add. So, like, him using brand would just be, like, GG anyways. So, like. It didn't matter if he, like, brand my equip spell. Like, it just didn't matter because he had, like, five cards left in his hand or, like, in his deck. So, if I, j I could have easily just decked him out, to be honest. Um, anyways, he makes me go first. Um, and I sided in a bunch of go first cards because I knew that would be the case. I didn't draw the best hand, but I sided in Strike and Solemns. I'm um, in a bunch of booty cards. So, I just set two. I can serve my Solemn Strike just in case he had the uh, Lightning Storm. So I, I played very passively, like um, setting only um, one strike instead of two and not get greedy. He's going to go off with Terraform and get Shipyard. Then use Shipyard's effect. But oh no, he starts off with his Dyer's first. I think he was trying to draw into a white first. But he So he drew into two uh, Plunder Monsters, which is really, really good. Um, and he also has Super Poly, which is really good in the mirror. But he's going to go Normal Summon Golden here. Uh, then Special Summon uh, the Bluebeard. The reason why he does this is so that he can make Bahamu Shark and then summon totally for a power play. But I just strike the summon here. Um, effectively leaving him with like one Cosmic Cyclone for me. So he kind of, his evening match were pre was pretty much dead. He's going to use Shipyard. And uh, for Shipyard's effect, he's going to probably discash yeah, the Dark Hole. I'm going to immediately chain Cosmic Cyclone to that just so he doesn't get the search and the recursion off of Shipyard. And then he has three cards off in hand. We're pretty much equal in card advantage at this point. Um, because he had to discard one off Shipyard. And so he went minus one on that play. And so we're the same in terms of card advantage. Um, I top deck Desires. And then I had to use Desires here. So Desires is going to be really, really good. It draws him into a red beard, which is really, really nice. I checked his graveyard and I saw that he had monsters in his grave. So I'm just going to go normal summon red beard. Set two. And then pass in, in main phase two. Um. So right there, I set the booty, and then I set the strike. Just because if Redbeard goes to the grave, I can just uh, recur it the following turn. Um, here, he normal summons. He draws into, like, nothing great. Um, so he he just, like, kind of used 
Uh, oh, wait, he does have the hair in the grave, so he's going to use hair effect to discard the ship ship shipping to bring back the hair. And then, bruh, he's going to super poly me. I think he's going to super poly me after I make Blackbeard. So I, I, on resolution, I make uh, Redbeard, Blackbeard. And then because he didn't want me to draw, he just super polyed me. Which I don't know if that was correct because he could have... Yeah, I was like, hmm, interesting choice. He could have said evenly, yeah. But he says super poly just because he thought I could have killed him the following turn. That's why. He thought I had, like... Because technically, I could have. If he said evenly, I could have easily killed him. Um, So, anyways, he's going to super poly both my monsters into you. You already guessed it, Liss. But the thing about Liss is that it there's not equipped to anything. So, um, it's not... He doesn't get the search if he does negate. So, it is a quick effect negate, but he just doesn't get the search. So, I was, like, kind of chilling. So, what I do here is um, he then goes into ship ship ship. He's going to banish and equip the uh, the emblem. So, you probably think, Pack, why didn't you chain booty? Um, the reason why I didn't chain booty here is because if I chain booty and then summon, like, red, he would know that I have the booty and I just didn't want him to have that information. Um, also, he could just beat over the red and so it just wouldn't do anything. Um, so he's going to just attack me for 25, and that's fine. So there, I top deck the red beard. The, the red beard top deck is going to be really good. Um, because now, I can outplay him. I have the strike set, so all I have to do is activate red beard's effect, bait out the list, and then just strike it. And then he loses the card, because list has to discard a card. And then at this point in time, the game is pretty much over. Because now, red beard resolves. I can then summon uh, Blackbeard, and then I can just tag out Blackbeard into list to negate out whatever he wants. So, I, I at that point in time, like, I just had way too much card advantage. And so, I'm just going to tag into the list right away to draw an extra card. And then, I have double hand trap, a negate off list, and I, I, can, I can summon back Blackbeard. And I still have booty to bring back, like, red. So, it was just way too much advantage. And at this point, he's pretty much going to scoop. So, yep. At, before end phase end, I'm going to use list effect to summon out the Blackbeard. Um, and then, at this point, I'm just thinking about, hmm, how do I game him? So... Uh, I went normal summon uh, Bluebeard. I linked it off into Amarash. Then used Bluebeard effect to discard one, draw one. I drew into the shipyard, which is essentially how I'm going to basically push for game. Uh, but it didn't matter because he's already going to scoop. Um, and at this point in time, I take that. Uh, I take the entire match. So I think what we can learn from this is that the, the mirror is very technical. There's a lot of misplays that you can easily fall into. I definitely like, like, I mean, looking at the replay now, it makes a lot of sense why I played the way I did. But, like, for example, the whole white play, I thought I didn't activate it. But looking at it back in hindsight, I had the kaiju in my hand. And so, uh, Shu, who's in... So, I'm recording live on Twitch. I actually caught that as well. And he was saying, like, hmm, maybe you did that because you wanted to summon your kaiju. I was like, wait a second. Yeah, that makes more sense. Because I'm like, white is an effect that you just shouldn't forget. Like, um, it's just, like, so plus. So, um, that's pretty much it, guys, for the Plunder Mirror. The next um, game that I'm going to be showcasing you guys is against an Unchained deck. Alright guys, uh, we're now going to showcase to you guys uh, match number 2. Um, this is against the Unchained deck. So, like I said, I lose RPS again, and guess what? He makes me go first. So, I'm going to do what i um been originally doing. is I just go... set. I, well, I'm going to activate Desires, first of all, because Desires is crazy in my deck. Uh, draw 2. I'm just literally going to... Normal Summon Redbeard set 1 pass. So, w what I, um, my, my, my thing is, there's a specific reason why I did this, um, and why I didn't do this against the other decks, is because I drew Cosmic Cyclone. So, if I were to play the mirror, I can just go Cosmic Cyclone, banish his emblem, and then I would be fine. Even though I couldn't tag out Redbeard. So, I was like, this is okay. I have one hand trap, I have a Redbeard, and I have a Cosmic Cyclone. And I was like, hmm, that's fine. I didn't want to overcommit. That's why I don't use Shipyard, by the way. Even though I could have made more plays, I just want to keep as much information away from my opponents just to hide it. Um, anyways. My opponent's active as Lightning Storm and actually destroys my monster instead of the set, which makes sense because he's playing on chain, so all his monsters are dark, and then I can just tag out into darks and Morg and just banish his cards, and then that would put him at a pretty big abyss advantage. Then he's going to activate Abomination's Prison. He's going to search Arua, and then he's going to set an Abomination Chamber of the Unchained. So... Here's a ruling, a technical play that uh, you should know if you're playing Unchained. I I told my opponent, uh, he said he watches my stream as well. And so, like, he was really, really cool. It was always nice to play someone uh, who's, like, a fan. 
But um, in this case, I've played a lot of rogue decks, so I know a lot of like the interactions and the rulings associated with them, so they don't really surprise me. So you see that when he set the Abomination Chamber, I actually don't shotgun Cosmic Cyclone. Um, even though I know he has a Rua in his hand, he, because I know he searched it. The reason why is because if you read a Rua carefully, it says that like you can target one card you control, destroy it, and if you do, special summon this card from your hand. So there's a very important uh, clause here that says, destroy the targeted card and if you do, which means that if you use the effect and you don't and aren't able to destroy the targeted card, the Arua cannot special summon itself from the hand. Um, so that's what literally what I'm going to do. So he's going to go Arua effect to target the set, and I'm going to chain Cosmic Cyclone because thereby preventing him from using um, Arua. So if I wear the shotgun, the Cosmic Cyclone on the chamber, I effectively get punished by another chamber. And you see right now in the replay that he actually did have the second one. So if I were to shotgun this, he could literally just set another one, then use a rule effect, pop the chamber, summon a rule from the hand, chamber triggers, summon um the summon a Rekia, um, and then he just gains way too much advantage off that interaction just because I shotgunned my cards. So this is one of the biggest importance of like learning how people's decks works so that you can like uh carefully time your inter interruption just so that they don't gain um a lot of advantage. Um and also just because if you look at my board, I pass it on literally one cosmic cyclone and one red beard as my only form of disruption. So I needed to carefully use my interaction um just to make sure that like he doesn't gain too much advantage from them. Um, and that was like definitely an outplay. So he was he even mess he even mentioned this in the call when we're talking. He's like, "Wow, that really hurt." Um, and it makes sense, right? Because he's playing go second, right? He made me go first, so I know that like he's playing lightning storm. He's playing a lot of go second cards, which are basically bricks if I don't commit a lot of cards to the field. He lightning storm for one, so like that was fine with me to be honest. So at this point in time, he's gonna have to go normal summon Arua and then attack for fifteen hundred and then just pass turn. Uh, he's going to set the Abomination Chamber, which is nice. I draw into the Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, but you'll see that I actually don't want to use it. Um, the reason why is because uh, the Arua floats, so uh, I just don't want to do that. It just didn't make sense to do it. But anyways, I'm going to activate Evenly Match um, on him. And yeah, if I, activate, if I Slumber, then I can Evenly Match as well. But anyways, I Evenly Match him, and I expected him to actually hit the monster. And I really wanted him to have a monster because... I wanted him to essentially like uh, give me a, a card in this graveyard for my Blackbeard to, to work. Anyways, I'm going to evenly match him. And then after that, I'm going to activate the Shipyard. You'll see that um, I actually discard the Bluebeard for, for cost. Um, and the reason why I do this is because um, Bluebeard is going to get me a draw. I get a search off Shipyard. And then Bluebeard is actually going to discard the Slumber. And then the Slumber gets me a search on the following turn. So that's pretty much why I uh, did it this way. Um, I search the white beard, then I can use uh Bluebeard's effect to discard the slumber and then draw an additional card. Um, so that's like the main reason why I played it the way I did. Um, at this point, I just went normal summon Redbeard and then pass. Remember, I'm playing very passively because I'm afraid of this set card being actually an evenly matched. Believe it or not, I was also really um afraid of his set card being um, uh, uh lightning storm as well. Because um, the thing is, he's actually not punished by setting his back row because um, he knows that I know how his deck work. So you get really punished when you pop back row cards against unchained decks because the unchained back row actually float. So um, that's why I was really afraid of the back row and I didn't want to overcommit. The ogre is pretty much dead in my hand, to be honest. It's only re like maybe good against like the link, but I mean his cards float, so I, I always go minus on the ogre anyways. Anyways, he's going to top deck the um, Abomination Unchained Soul. And he's going to, so on summon, he's going to go Abomination Chamber, summon the, the dog, the Dogu. Um, so shout out to Coder. Um, and then I'm going to make Redbeard immediately on his summon, immediately on his summon, summon Mork. And then I'm banishing the hell out of that card. Guaranteed. And then because I discarded White, I also get a free summon off that as well. So I'm going to serve Shipyard uh, off this um, because I know I'm going to discard a Shipyard off of the shipyard the following turn so um and also because if you check my banish i actually banished both my emblems so i was really unlucky and i only played two in the main deck um and then i i banished my last ship ship shipping so i had to search shipyard here and then here what i do is i actually summon the golden here and the reason why i summon golden here is because i can discard the ship ship shipping um and of course i was right he had the evenly match so that's why it was important to not overcommit. 
Um, but that's fine. I, I take it like a champ. I search the ship. Uh, I search the field spell, so I have a recovery play. So I just like keep the morph. Um, so yep, yep, ship, yep, ships. Uh, I topped like the kaiju, which is not the greatest, but um, I just banished the slumber because I'm like, yo, I can't believe I topped like a kaiju right when I was gonna slumber for a kaiju. <laughs> Unlucky. Anyways, it's free discard fodder, so I can't complain. I went shipyard and discarded uh gamma seal. The reason why I discarded water um, and not fire is because if I fire Kaiju him, I can then get uh, Bran, and then Bran can banish his back row um, so that he doesn't get to pop his back row. Um, so that's why it's really, really important to do that. The water can't even tag me out into anything relevant, and so that's why like I think the Dogran to keep in hand was way better. Anyways, I'm going to search white, and then at this point in time, um, it's basically just going to go normal summon white, attack for both, but I think in hindsight, I could have done more damage if I linked both of them off. Um, what I mean by that is, like, I could have linked both of them off into a, um, a, a Blackbeard, and then used White Effect to summon out the red, and then that would have done 2600 damage. It's, like, an extra 100 damage, um, but it's, like, whatever. Anyways, I, I summoned Blackbeard and, and the Redbeard here, um, and then I just passed turn. Uh, he tops next to Arua, but he has no way to trigger it. So here's gonna be a super big brain play that I'm gonna do. He's gonna go Normal Summon Arua. He's gonna go Normal Summon Arua. And he's going to try to crash this, right? And I'm like, yo, this guy is smart. I'm like, what are the chances he has, like, the soul in his hand or he summons souls from his deck, right? So I'm like, the best way to prevent this, right? Because, you know, I know how the Unchained deck works because I've played a lot of rogue decks. And so what I did is I used Blackbeard Effect, tag it out, and summon a brand in defense mode so he cannot crash the Arua. So he cannot crash the Arua. This is very critical why I did this. Very critical. Just because if he summons Unchained Soul, and then he can gain so much, so much advantage off that play. Um, and then you'll see that he's actually going to attack into my Redbeard. Um, which makes sense at the time, because technically I haven't used Redbeard Effect to tag out yet. So it didn't matter if he attacked Bran or Redbeard at this point in time. Um, so he's not, But by attacking Redbeard, I can use Redbeard Effect to equip to the Bran. So the next turn, I set up my OTK. I topped like another shipyard, but remember I desired, so I'm like very low in resources, um, but I'm still in a decent position. So, because I knew that I can't OTK him, um, because I if I were to attack his monster, his monsters keep floating. I had the Dogran, so I'm just going to Dogran him. Um, and I guess this is technically where like, if I kept Gamma Seal, it would have been slightly better. Um, but I think that's totally fine. I'm going to use Shipyard's effect to detach the Ogre, because I realize the Ogre is not going to be that helpful, and I want to keep the Shipyard in my hand. So that I had discard fodder for uh, for any of my plunder effects without relying on the RNG from Blackbeard. I'm going to normal summon Whitebeard. And then instead of doing anything fancy, I just go straight to battle. I'm going to attack Bran for uh, 500. Um, he takes 500. And then I'm going to attack with the Whitebeard for 3,000. It gets really big because Bran boosts by 500. And then both of these equips add another 1,000. Um, so he just takes 3,000. And then I set the Cosmic Cyclone. At this point in time, if he summons a Dark, I have a, I have a Banishing Removal. I have a black row removal with the brand, and then I have a cosmic cyclone. So I'm like, yo, there's nothing you can top deck. And so, of course, the man's top decks are Panker tops, and I was like thinking to myself, this is still fine. The reason is because all my monsters are huge right now, so he can't get value off the pank. What I mean by that, he can't just go battle phase, attack a monster, and then tribute pank to punish me. Instead, he literally has to shotgun the pank, and then just pop a card on my field. Which I was like, Okay, sure, that's fine. I kill him the next turn. Anyways, um, we go into siding, um, and then we're going to go into game two. So, um, at this point in time, um, he made me go first again, and I expected that. So, I sided in judgments, and I sided in strikes. Uh, because I know that, like, a lot of... I didn't expect that many decks to be playing go second, but I was definitely prepared for, like, decks that wanted to go second. So, that, that's why I sided in a bunch of, like, really strong go first cards. And, like, the best cards I can think of were, like, Judgment and Strike, just because a lot of people are playing a lot of blower cards, as you saw. I got Even Lead, Lightning Storm, um, you know, like, in both in, in both the matches I showed you guys, right? And, like, the Plunder Mirror, I got literally Even Lead and then Lightning Storm. So I got my board fully wiped. And then the guy in, like, the last round just Even Lead me, so for, like, three. So um, we see that's why, like, going second is really, really powerful in Rogue. But anyways, I'm going to start off with Desires. Um, I'm going to draw two cards, but... He asked me, which is fine. I thought about it. I'm like, hmm, him asking me was okay because as long as the shipyard is not ash, that's fine. I look into my banish pound. I didn't banish anything important. I banished one of the, all of the, the, the monsters for the plunder deck. 
And then I banished one booty, but I started in the second one. And then uh, every other thing was, like, okay. Like, even though hitting one Gamma Seal kind of hurt, but I played four Kaijus for that reason. Um, and then the extra Solemn was, like, fine. It's, like, not that great if I top deck Solemn Judgment anyway. So I was, like, that's fine to banish. I banished another Desires, which is really good. I definitely want to banish that card. Um, so my banish was, like, really, really good. And so I was, like, not too worried. I didn't activate Shipyard. And then I detached the Bluebeard. Search Whitebeard. And then use Bluebeard's effect. Um, actually, no, I don't use Bluebeard effect to actually discard the Whitebeard. I actually just normal summon Whitebeard and then pass. That was a misplay. What I should have done was just use Bluebeard effect to discard the White, get a free draw, and then use White effect to summon out the um, the Red. That would have been the most optimal play because I would have gotten a free draw off of the Bluebeard. But um, in this case, I just uh, pass on White. Um, because I knew he didn't have Ash too. Like you already used it, so that was definitely a misplay to get an extra free draw for me. Um, anyways, he's going to activate the Abomination Prison. He's going to get Escape of the Unchained. And you'll see again, he's going to um, Normal Summon Reiki. Immediately on Summon, I'm going to Solemn uh, Judgment that. Um, just because I know that the deck is very Normal Summon reliant. The only way that it plays through the Normal Summon is like the Arua, which um, I figured he had. Because right when he set that card, I'm going to do the same interaction. I'm going to make Bran. Wait for him to uh, Rua, but I, the, because he had the Reikia, I get to make Blackbeard first to get a free draw. Um, but you see, look, if I, look, if I, like, didn't misplay with the Bluebeard, I would have gotten an extra Cosmic Cyclone in my hand. Which would have been so much better, to be quite honest. Um, but, you know, we live and we learn. Um, I'm going to use Brand Effect on the Rua so that he essentially um, doesn't get the Rua summon. Uh, he doesn't get a card popped on his field to trigger his souls. And then I get to search off Brand. So that was pretty, pretty good. I mean, in the next turn, we pretty much have uh, OTK. I'm going to use uh, the Shipyard to detach the Whitebeard, search the Emblem, use White Effect to summon the Golden Hair, Normal Summon, um, and then Linked Off into uh, Blackbeard, and then white Redbeard triggers when it goes to the Graveyard to equip the Redbeard. So that I know at this point in time, I have 3,500 on Brand, and I have 3,100 on Blackbeard, and then all I have to do is tag out Blackbeard in Battle Phase and then just go for game. So that's literally what I did. Um, I also equipped this just for the flex. Um, it di didn't matter. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys, uh, for the game. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed both those matches, and uh, hopefully you learned something from them. At least a little bit more of the interactions within li live gameplay of how, like, the plunder cards work. I hope you also learned from, like, some of the misplays I made. Um, so, for example, like I said before, the whole Bluebeard played. That's a really intricate play, actually. Um, it's really, really neat because if you draw a ship, Plus Bluebeard, it lets you get a free draw and a free summon um, without the normal summon. So it's really, really strong. Because you go, you like I said before, you win ship, dump blue, search white, blue effect, dump white, draw one, white effect, summon. So you don't lose any card advantage. And the extra free card extra really helps. Especially because it helps you see your side deck when you're siding like Solemns. It's really, really nice. Or siding like cards like Cosmic. It's really, really good for that. So without further ado, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, uh, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Um, also, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, and I'll see you guys live on Twitch um, where I do decks like this and play decks like this um, live all the time. Just so you can understand more of like the gameplay uh, and the live gameplay. Um, but without further ado, guys, thank you so much for your support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.